Yo, dudes and dudes, your friendly neighborhood Jacksplate is back with another video for y'all today. This video was actually inspired by Karai87 on Twitter, who asked me this. Jack's Play Fitness, quick question. Who do you think is the most underrated underdog in fiction? I started reading Kenichi and then realizing he started off with nothing and became so strong at the end was so motivational since a lot of characters have hidden potential when he had none. And I thought this was a spectacular topic to talk about. But before we get started, my channel is only 15,000 subs away from hitting half a million. So be sure to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button and share your energy with me so we can reach this goal together. Thank you all so much. I love y'all. But I love this because whenever we go into a story, we always follow our protagonists who are shown in episode one to be somewhat more blessed than the average person as they decide to go with the power fantasy route of showing them improve along the way, but always having a certain knack that made them better at it than most. We may get a flashback later on of how they attain those skills, but quite a few times in the very first few episodes, we are shown the characters were already strong or had potential to be super strong and able to handle bullies on their own. For example, let's go over some noticeable names. Dragon Ball has a child version of Goku lift up a car and then proceed to get shot in the head and be completely unaffected, which makes this scene so fucking dumb. But I fucking hate that scene, so it's dumb as fuck. Sailor Moon had Usagi be an average teenager before she realized, wow, I'm actually an overpowered hax god that can solo all these universes. Naruto has our boy housing a nuke bomb beast which he later befriends and becomes one of the most busted ninja in the entire series. One Piece starts off with our rubber boy Luffy being bulletproof and already monstrously strong. When we meet Austin in Black Clover, he's already doing one-handed handstand push-ups for reps. Ichigo talks and sees ghosts before we find out every other blessing that boy has. But let's go to some series based more in reality somewhat. Baki starts off with our boy fighting 100 thugs and being jacked as fuck, and just a 13 year old kid who has a super rich mother for all of his training needs, and not to mention being the son of the strongest creature on the planet so far. Funny enough, one of the most grounded series has our boy Ippo start off with a monstrously powerful punch, already being incredibly strong from years of working on a fishing boat, and not to mention being taller when he's lying down, if you catch my drift. <laughs> he's got a big dick Lewinson. Give it to me. King and Ashra, our boy Oma is taking down a buff henchman and pro MMA fighters casually at the very start of it. And even my personal favorite series, How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift, gave my girl Hibiki insane punching power, godly arm wrestler strength, and to slam jam on fools. So majority of the time, series will give characters little boosts that they adjust along the way to make them stand out more and show they were pretty much destined for greatness from the start. But with Kenichi, the boy starts at ground zero. He has none. He's getting picked on at school by even the wimps. His muscles are weak. His cardio conditioning is, you know, well, TBH, this is pretty good because like, I mean, most people would have passed out of 12 seconds of this. But for the most part, he's a blank slate who has nothing special about him besides running into this busty beauty Mew who had a thing for him and took him to his dojo. Each of Kenichi's masters give him personal training to grow in styles and overcome certain fighters, and when their style isn't enough for the boy to accurately use or isn't giving him the results fast enough for a fight he has to face, another master will come along and help him to grow and so the progression of skills becomes much more intriguing as he meets different fighters and seeing what each master is going to teach him since each master has their own unique style. Buff Apachai is a Muay Thai god of death. Eat your heart out, Gaolong, even though I still love you. Akasame is a jujitsu master and also a master of the human body who can help Kenichi recover from most injuries. Kensei Ma is a perverted teacher of Chinese Kenpo. Shiyu Sakagi could teach these two a thing or two about karate since he's the 100 degree street fighter and one of the most badass characters in the series. Shigure Kosaka. Shigure is the maiden of weapons with insane skill, strength, power, and, and, and. I'm sorry, I got a little bit distracted there. She's great and my personal fave. And then we got the man himself who would destroy you during a fight, don't at me, and his granddaughter Miyu who is pretty badass herself. But the point of this is, all of these teachers have insane abilities and to see Kenichi gradually learn each and every one of these amazing skills is what gets you invested. The power ceiling is so high and clearly shown on so many different levels and we're excited to see how he can ascend to each of them. Not to mention the fact he's encouraged to get stronger than the elder to get with his girl Miu and seeing how great they are for each other, that is one powerful pre-workout for that boy. Now I know some people may say, but how is he talentless? Kenichi was mastering complicated moves, going through strenuous training and beating people who trained for years and had a huge leg up on him and experience. But to be fair, he does train every day under very extreme circumstances and has someone who can keep him from being crippled. 
Also, it was even mentioned that if the masters were training someone with a natural talent for martial arts, like someone who's either a prodigy or just someone who's naturally more athletic or someone who can pick it up faster, they would have a much quicker advancement in skills and fighting and ability than Kenichi would and then be at a much higher level than him. But Kenichi's talent is never giving up on himself and having mega masters who care for him. All right, look, right. All right, just, just think of it like this. All right, you are a talentless hack, and then you somehow magically went to train at Ryu's and Paku and really focused on bettering yourself. You'd probably ascend to a level you never dreamed of just from the quality of teachers that were there. But knowing how hellish the days are and going back day after day is what makes Kenichi shine as an individual and underdog because he literally was not special. He was just some average kid and went after it. What makes him special is his work ethic, which is something I freaking love. Now, to be fair, this level of luck is rather insane. I mean, someone conveniently meeting a fine ass woman who takes him to be trained by the most elite badasses of every martial art. It's like you walking down the street and seeing a dojo with these six as your personal coaches. I'm still jelly as fuck of this dude. And from then on, the progression is gradual. He is not a prodigy and doesn't pick up moves instantaneously. He'll get his ass beat, learn some new moves, and go fight again, and constantly improves throughout the series. And even though this series is far from perfect, I love this type of motivation it gives. How many times have you watched a show and in the back of your subconscious thought, damn, they were always special though, and always destined for greatness. It doesn't take away the love had for those characters, but that thought is always there whether you choose to acknowledge it or not. It's so great to see someone start from the floor with nothing and rise to the top with hard work and actually see it pay off. Now, of course, there are other series where characters started off with nothing either, like a couple of my personal favorites, My Hero Academia being the most well-known, where Deku was a normal kid in the right place at the right time and has worked his ass off to get as powerful as he is today. But if you've read the manga, you know that he's able to use that power are far better than all my ever could. Yet yeah, another great one, but highly underrated, is this series Holy Land about the bullied kid who decides he's not gonna take that crap anymore. And I'll actually save talking about this because I want to do a full video in depth on it because not enough people talk about the greatness that is Holy Land. But again, for me personally, it is just super inspiring to see someone ascend from nothing. Now sure, he was in a one in one million situation where he not only met the greatest fighters on the planet and had three busty beautiful women loving on him, but it pretty much was. He was given an opportunity and he gave it his all to succeed and transform himself and that's why Kenichi Shirahama is one of the most underrated underdogs in fiction to me. I love the message of this series. Just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a trash can, not a trash can't, all right? Patent pending. Now, you go out there and you kick ass and you go find a beautiful woman to love you like Kenichi did and go fight her grandpa and all that great stuff because that is what this series gets you motivated to do. Well, dudes and dudettes, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you made it this far, type top underdog as a comment below. It lets me know who watched the video all the way through and I have a question for y'all. Who is your favorite fictional underdog and why? And also, which master from Kenichi was your personal favorite? Mine was Shigure for reasons. But anyways, for those of you looking to transform like Kenichi, be sure to check out my programs down below that come with meal plans and calendars to help you succeed, or check out my Tough Like The Tunes playlist, completely free workouts that you can do on your favorite characters. I'm sure I've covered at least one of your personal favorites. And for an in-depth look at Kenichi's training, watch this Would That Work Out video I did on him. But I hope you had fun, and remember like I always say, keep calm, booyah on, and don't forget, moment tie. Oh God, I'll find my own Mew one day, or hopefully a Shigure. <sighs>